good afternoon. I'm sure as everybody knows, today is September 11th, and it's the Jets' home opener against the, as I say, America's team, Dallas Cowboys. Today is a very solemn day, as it is the 10-year anniversary of the September 11th tragedy. And as you can see behind me, not only is the American flag or the New Jersey flag at half-mast, but all the flags are at half-mast today. Not only will I be going around and filming my documentary Gang Greed for the fourth consecutive season, but I will be getting people's thoughts, opinions, stories, recollections as to their remembrances, their experiences, and what they remember regarding September 11th. I'm sure as a lot of people had loved ones that were there, or they had friends, or in some way, you know, just have some kind of memory regarding that day. So join us as we go around and get people's stories. I'm sure listening to their th thoughts, their opinions, and their stories will make you remember where you were and what you did and how you feel regarding September 11th. If you want to wait until my go ahead. Comes, I get yeah, just, just, just go ahead. What was, oh. what, yeah, where were you on September 11th? I was in Park South Brooklyn delivering UPS and uh, watching uh, papers and smoke and ash all over my UPS truck. It, was br it turned to be white instead of brown. And I had to put a bandana on my face. I don't have, it's sick. And I see all kinds of people walking all over. So what was going through your head as all this was happening? I, didn't, I thought the world was in. And uh, I found out what was happening. The towers are going down, and then I looked over the over the city, and I saw the towers burning. Falling down. How'd that, you know, make you feel? Very sad. I'm going to kill some people. And today, ten years later, still emotional about it. I have friends that have died and perished in there. My ex co-worker became a fireman. It was his first out fire and his last fire. Wow. And every time I see him on it, I get upset. And I had a neighbor that I grew up with. He was a maintenance man. He went in three times. Third time in April. So today really holds today a special is, place for you. Yes. Wow. Right now I'm not fully patriotic. Because I'm not ready. With all my American stuff. I only have part. I'm going to... Bottom part Jets, top part's all America. God bless us. Ten years ago, I was in sixth grade in middle school. At the time when I heard what was going on in New York City, I couldn't fathom it. I didn't actually picture planes crashing the towers until I got home and I watched the news. That's when I realized what was going on. I realized it was exchange for up. My father went to New York City to help with the volunteer, with other firefighters, the FDNY. The photos he brought back were catastrophic. The entire New York City, without its color, was all gray. And my pen looked like a volcano. Put every, all our differences aside, no matter it's uh, financial or anything else put us different aside to, to, to come one go. And like I said, it brings back a lot of memories and uh, a lot of emotion. Uh, all firefighters, all police officers, Port Authority, uh, we just do our job. When we do what we're supposed to do. We're, we're trained to do it. We don't worry about the consequences a lot of times. Uh, just like all those 343 firefighters that went up those towers to rescue those people out there, they were worried about rescuing the civilians, not themselves. We put other people's lives in front of ours. Hi, my name is John Mormando. Um, remembering 10 years ago, I lost a lot of friends on 9 I worked on the New York Mercantile Exchange the Financial Center. Um, luckily, I was not there that day, so uh, I'm here today to talk about it. But I lost a lot of friends. Um, you know, we will never forget it. Uh, still to this day, we. You know, the moment of silence is, this brings back a lot of, a lot of memories. Um, you know, it's uh, an unfortunate thing that happened, but I think the fact that we have all these memorials and we, we keep the people in, us, in our memories, 
and they didn't die in vain. Uh, I want to say uh, God bless America, and thank God for the men and women that are protecting our country. Cheers to them. Just curiosity, what floor? Uh, the New York Mercantile Exchange, we were on the third floor. Uh, we were about 150 yards away from the trade centers. So, fortunately, nobody that was in our building that day died from collateral damage. The people that I knew that died were the, the brokers that were actually up in the trade center for a morning meeting. There was about 15 of them, a couple of them really good friends of mine. And, you know, uh, when I heard that, that you know, everybody on the floor was safe, I, I was you know, relieved, obviously. And then we heard about these guys that went up for these you know, morning meeting, and I knew that they, they weren't coming out. Uh, a couple, like I said, a couple of them were good friends of mine. Went on golf trips with them. Um, you know, just a very unfortunate thing. But um, you know, ten years later, I can't believe it. It was like it was yesterday. Uh, you know, we went. We were the first. We were the first business back to work. We went back six days later. They opened the floor. Mayor Giuliani, uh, Hillary Clinton was there. We had a bunch of Governor Pataki was there. And we were the first business to get back going because they weren't going to stop us. We're in the commodities markets, we're traders, you know, it's a big part of the, uh, the world industry. And they weren't going to stop us from doing what we did from our business and getting back, you know, to some semblance of normal, uh, normalcy. So, uh, like I said, it's it, like it was yesterday. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I, I said the only thing that kept me from going there was that my wife was on a business trip, so I was babysitting my one year old son. And I was out that day, and you know, just twist of fate uh, that I'm here today to you know, commemorate this day and, uh, and remember the friends that you know that, that went down that day. And in New Jersey, uh, in the metro area, with the New York Jets, their fans, and uh, everybody that suffered in this area, uh, to just see the way the country's come around since that day, it's a great thing. And. I'm proud to be American and proud to be a Jeff fan. I'm Jesus Zaccato. Ten years ago, 9-11, I was flying from Newark Airport to Atlanta, Georgia. We landed in Georgia. We were parked on a tarmac for hours. It was announced to us ten minutes after we had landed that both Twin Towers were on the ground. It was the worst day of our lives. Of, of the entire United States. So 10 years later, I mean, what's the feeling now? 10 years later, the memory is still there as if it were yesterday and emotions run high. And obviously, as a, as a country, it was the worst day in the United States. Now, you're, you're a different individual because you were on a plane that day. I was on a plane. We had no knowledge of what happened until we landed. I guess we were, we were close enough to our destination that they allowed us to land in Atlanta, Georgia. And after you found out planes flew in there, I mean, what was your feeling like, you know, like, because you were on a plane almost at the same time? Uh, the company that I worked for, plus my family, they were not sure exactly what plane went down that left from Newark Airport. Right. It was the plane that went down in Pennsylvania uh, probably left something like 20 minutes uh, before before I had gone. So 20 minutes after I had gone. So you know there was a lot of uh, anxiety in the family. People at our company uh, wanted to make sure of my safety and what have you. Um, got that. That's where I was born. Hey, uh, this is Eric Manasi from uh, Jesuit, and you can follow me on uh, Twitter, E Man, E underscore M A N. Hey, my 9-11 uh, recollection, uh, I was with my father there. How old were you? He's not going to show up. <laughs> uh, basically, I was working on my uh, yard, and uh, I just moved to the area. I was in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, and uh, I had a guy come up to me who was one of the construction guys and said, Hey, did you hear the news? And I said, Yeah, I heard it. I heard that Michael Jordan retired, not a word. and he goes, nah, that's not what I'm talking I'm about. Here. And uh, found I out, I got cut off. Just keep going, just keep going. And just found out that uh, you know, a plane hit the, uh, the Twin Towers. We thought it was a, a small a small uh, plane. It ended up being uh, something major. Um, 
Long story short, we, we stopped working on our yard and we spent uh, the entire day in mud because we're working in the yard and watching the, uh, what everyone else was watching. For that weather, it was awful. Um, and when I look at my house, every day, the stones that we built, I can't help but think that each stone represents a person who lost their life or a loved one that was affected. Um, every day, I walk into my yard and I think of that a lot. Because of That's my recollection. Oh yes, beautiful. Talk about your story, 9-11. Uh, we were over by uh, my son's house in uh, Portland. We were working on a uh, project of uh, doing his uh, front yard. Uh, he had a landscaper in there and he was bringing in uh, 40 truckloads of topsoil and we were building retaining walls. And all of a sudden he goes, hey, did you hear what's going on? I said, what are you talking about? It was like 9 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Rough. So he goes, go inside. I, I just got a uh, message on my cell phone that something's going on in New York. So we, we run at this house, he turns on the TV, and he says, hey, an airplane crashed into the uh, building. I says, and we all thought it was like an accident. Right. So we, we were over there, and then he comes back like, Seven minutes later, he says, hey, an airplane crashed into the Pentagon. I said, what? So we go inside, we turn on the uh, news channel. We're watching it, and as we're watching it, we saw another airplane crash into the second tower. And everybody goes, oh, my God, this has got to be something different. So the rest of the day, we were sitting in front of that television watching what was going on. And it was the most horrifying thing. We, we just couldn't believe it. Ten years ago, I tell you my experience. I wake up in the morning, I believe what's caught up tonight, something like that in the morning. So I tried to turn my TV, see what's going on. All the sudden I see no channels, everything was blocked out. So I start going channel 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 15, final channel 17, I believe. I saw the one of the big boards on fire. So they were saying there was a airplane crash into the one of the poor, but they said it was an accident. They didn't say nothing about it. So terrorist attack or whatever. So I was looking and I said, oh my God, I can't believe it, you know, I was on fire. So and then, uh, about five minutes I was making my coffee also. And then I said, I want to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom to wash me up. When I came back, they already hit the North Tower. So what's going on? Now they're talking about something that was going on with the right. terrorist attack. And I always believe me, I was so sick. I used to start crying because I can't believe what they did to us. You know, when the whole tour was on fire at this. And I miss it. I never saw the second plane to hit that. After that, you know, I see how it was going on. All this after 10 o'clock, I believe one tour would come down. And 10, 15 minutes later, they all went out. That was, that was, that was very scary. That was a very sad day in my life when I see that whole thing. That's what I can remember so far, but uh, that was very emotional moments in my life. To see somebody do to us. That's all I can tell you. So what is it, how, today, 10 years later, I mean, what is the feeling? Same feeling, I can't, I can't forget that. You know, it's something like, today, like today, the anniversary. It's like, was watching last night, what's going on, you know, through documentaries, and also... Never, never forget that. Never, never forget that. Yes, that. How you doing, my brother? Why? Well, what are your feelings? About, what are your feelings or remembrances of that day? I don't know. It, it, it's sad. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's sad. It, it is. It, it, it's, it's made me it, sick. At first, at first, it's it's it, it's it's confusion, sadness, anger, and then and then you, when, you, when you see those things go down, and they, ten years later, nobody really gives a shit anymore. But I still give a shit. You know what I mean? I care about that. And I care about our American people. And this president ain't doing shit for us. You know, he's just taking more debt, more debt, more debt, more debt, more debt. You know what I mean? Everyone yelled at Bush. What, what, oh, Bush knew about it. Over the inside job, that's a joke, too. The inside job thing, you hear yeah. about that? I've like, heard about on, that. Come on, let's, let's, let's get real. The, you know, he would do it. He goes to the ceremony to somebody's cry. You think he's an inside job. Come on, guys. You know what I mean? I don't know how you guys feel. I feel the same way, believe you know me. I, mean? like, I, I, I get upset. Like, you know, it's 10 years I'd later. I don't for the whole thing. It feels like it was yesterday to me. I was in college at the time, you know? And it's like, for me, it's like, it's yesterday. You know, I came in last year. Yeah. So. Are you, and you're FDNY now? 
I mean, well, did that make you want to join the FDNY? Well, I don't know. It was a tough decision. It was either that or military. I got out of college and there was no job, so. Yeah. Kind of like now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Right, nice meeting you guys. Same here. Right. Dave. Take it easy. Thank Thank you. Nice meeting you guys. God bless, man. God bless. Sir. Thank you. Wow. So, you, see, you see, everybody got a different opinion, everybody got a different feeling, so. Believe me or not, that, that hurt me. It's still, I feel very hurt what it did to us. That's something that you never forget in your life. That's what you believe. Exactly. How you doing? John Peters, Bronx, New York. Actually, City Island, New York, which is the same part of the Bronx. But yeah, this has been quite an emotional day uh, for the whole city, the whole country, for the whole world. But I want to say one thing about 9 11. Of course, losing loved ones has been really a quite difficult situation that we don't ever forget about. But I want to say about sports uplifting the city, uplifting the country, and serving as a distraction to what has happened is a really big deal. And I know from 2001, I was in college at the time and the Yankees were in the World Series. And that was really an uplifting area for people to like distract themselves from what happened. But I know that's changed now and we're on 10 years later and now we're here for the Jets in the night game. I think in the same way, it still puts a smile on New Yorkers faces overseeing New York sports continue to play, perform, and you know, realize that life goes on and continues future happiness. But I, we can't change what happened, but I can say that the future looks better, and my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody else that lost their loved ones in 2001. Cheers. Uh, September 11, 2001 was a tremendous tragedy for all of us. Uh, I remember that I was in history class um, when it all happened, and we got the day off of school, and for the next two days, we did nothing but watch the television. My mom was crying, out of control. Uh, I was only 11, 12 years old when it happened, and even I knew everything that was going to happen, or everything that was happening at the time. And uh, yeah, being a sailor in the United States Navy, especially on the USS New York, it's pretty much what we live for: is a reminder to the to the world that we recovered. Ten years later, we come to the 9/11 commemoration. We're here. We're proud. America's proud. New York City's proud. And uh, yeah, there's my blank right there. Well, yeah. I drew but a blank. What you just said before—that's 9/11 is the reason why you joined. Actually, 9/11 is the reason I joined. Um, I always had an urge for the military, but ever since 9/11, I was either determined to be a cop in the FBI or the U.S. military and I decided to go to the Navy. Um, and I don't know how, but they walked up to me one day and said, you have orders to the USS New York, and I asked what the hell that was. And they said that it was the ship built out of the World Trade Center. 7.5 metric tons of it. How'd that make you guys feel when you found out you are on the New York? Uh, it was a proud feeling, like 24 seven. Every time you go to work, you just know that you're on a ship that stands for something greater than yourself, greater than just a, a warship. It's a, it's a symbol for what happened on 9-11 in 2001, and uh, it's something that we're proud to be on. Every time, the, every time anyone, anyone runs into us, they're proud. It uh, makes you feel like you're doing something better than just going to work every day. It, it gives meaning to, your, to our job. So. And just so you know, faces have to be not on this to protect the innocent. Exactly. <laughs> You know, today's game was interesting. You know, was able to get some words in, as you saw with some, you know, military people, you know, and civilians. Uh, did approach certain other people in the military, some army people, uh, state police of New Jersey, even some fire people from uh, New York, and some people did not want to give their stories. People didn't want to talk about 9/11. I guess some people still feel it's, it's too close to home. Some of the things they may have witnessed or taken part in, family members, it's just something that they don't want to relive. For, it, for certain individuals that served in the military, it's almost as if you know they served during wartime and they don't want to talk about war. They don't want to talk about what they witnessed and what they experienced. So it seems that way for some individuals as well, which I do respect. You know, I understand that people don't want to talk about it. I never pressed the issue. 
I didn't pursue them and I didn't want to make anybody, you know, feel like do it, do it, do it in that way. So, you know, I sure, hope everybody enjoyed the messages that they heard from people. Um, certain points, listening to it, I was like, wow. You know, you expect one thing and here you are, you're getting a completely different story. That totally opens up and it makes you realize and see things you never saw before. It, it paints a picture in your mind that you never had. So today's September 11th Remembrance is definitely one I'm going to take with me. Not only because, you know, it's the 10th anniversary, but because, you know, it did it during a Jets game. And I always have a lot of memories when it comes to Jets home games. But today really spoke to me because of the people that we talked to, the people that we saw, and the message that everybody wanted to get across from their experience. So I hope you take it with you well, and hope your remembrance of 9-11 too remains in your heart.